Hi, I'm Chris Grover, author of Flash CS4 The Missing Manual. Adobe added lots of new bells and whistles to Flash with the CS4 release, and I'm eager to introduce some of those new features. This screencast shows how to add cool instant animation using motion presets. A follow-up screencast explores the power of Flash's spanking new motion editor. Here are the topics that we'll cover in this screencast. We'll start off with a definition of the word tween. Then you'll learn how to animate objects with just a couple of clicks by applying a motion preset. You'll see ways to edit the tween created by that motion preset. And then at the end, we'll introduce Flash's new motion editor. So first off, what's a tween? If you're familiar with Flash, you don't need a definition. But if you're a newcomer, here's a quickie introduction. An animation in Flash is made up of a series of frames that are shown in a timeline. So for example, to show a car moving down the road, you just move the car a tad in each frame in the timeline. The good news is Flash saves you the drudge work of manually creating every single frame. To do this, you create a keyframe at the beginning. And then you create another keyframe at the end of the path. And then Flash creates all the frames in between, giving your car a smooth motion. The in-between frames are called tweened frames, and the whole process is called a tween. Flash has three types of tweens. The shape tween, the classic tween, and the new improved motion tween. There are uses for all three, but this last one, the motion tween, gives you the most tweening power and control. So it's the one we're exploring now. In Flash, you apply tweens to movie clip symbols. So the first step is to drag a symbol onto the stage. We're going to use this wheel symbol. It's a two-frame movie clip of a spinning wheel. Then we'll open the Motion Presets window using Window, Motion Presets. Inside, you see two folders. The Custom Presets folder holds any motion presets that you've created and saved. The default presets folder holds the presets that were all pre-designed by the folks at Adobe. To get an idea of what a pre one of the presets does, click on the preset. You see a little animation preview. To apply a preset, you have to select your object, select the preset that you want to apply, click the Apply button. At that point, all you have to do is take a look at the results. Press Enter or the Return key on a Mac to see the motion in your Flash authoring environment. Or you can press Control Enter to see the animation in all its uh, spinning wheel glory. You probably noticed that as soon as we applied the motion preset, a few things changed in Flash. This beaded line appeared attached to the wheel symbol. That line is the motion path. And then down in the timeline, you see a tween highlighted in blue. The first frame in the timeline shows the standard keyframe. Farther down the timeline, you see property keyframes. These markers show where one or more of the wheel's properties have changed. In this case, the width of the wheel symbol changes to create that nice smooshing effect. You'll learn more about these property keyframes later. Next up, let's see the different ways we can edit and tweak this tween. If you have any previous experience tweening in Flash, you're going to be surprised by some of the features in the new motion tween. As before, you can edit your tween by dragging the symbol to a new location. So let's move the playhead back to uh, the beginning frame. And then we'll drag the wheel over to this step. Notice how the green motion path automatically adjusts. Test the tween and you can see the changes. Now one of the things that's different. You can change the position of the symbol at any point in the timeline. Just find the spot in the timeline. and adjust the position of the symbol. Test it again. We can see that it follows a new motion path. Notice that in the timeline, 
Flash creates a new property keyframe that stores details about that change. We're not just talking about position changes either. Any change you can apply to a movie clip can be recorded in a property keyframe. That includes dimensions, uh, skewing, 3D position, color, and transparency. You make the changes where you want them, and Flash adjusts your tween and the motion path. Another way you can edit your tween is by changing the motion path. The motion path is similar to any other line or path that you draw using the pen tool. And using the select tool, you can reshape that line. Now let's take a look at the change. So using these two editing methods, it's easy to fine-tune any motion tween that you're working with. Now let's see how to swap the existing symbol inside of a tween with a, an entirely new symbol. So we've got this great motion tween that we've fine-tuned and works just right. What if your boss suddenly says, the wheel's out and I want to see a banner that says, giant price drop? Well, not a problem. In our library, we've got another symbol that says giant price drop. It was created using the text tool and then turned into shapes using the modify break apart menu command. To make the swap, all we have to do is drag the new symbol on top of the current symbol. It's just that easy. Now let's take a look at swapping the existing motion path with a new path that we've drawn by hand. In a separate layer, we'll draw a new path using the pen tool. Okay, we'll go back to the tween layer, select the existing tween, and delete it. Now, in the motion path, cut the path in that layer and paste it into the new layer. Now, when we test the animation, it follows the jagged lines of our new path. Okay, to wrap this up, let's take a quick peek at the motion editor. This is the brand new tool that lets you fine tune all the property changes in your motion tween with precision. There's not enough time to do more than to introduce the motion editor here, but that's the sole topic of another screencast. So thanks for watching. Uh, you'll find lots of details about motion tweens, motion presets, and the motion editor between the covers of Flash CS4 The Missing Manual. So go ahead and take a look.